this morning is in this book. So 117. 117.
if they don't know it, they know it now. <laughs> Anybody got a request? All right. Let me find it. Another of my favorites. 51. Y'all all know that song, don't you? Okay. Where the soul of man never dies. Mm -hmm.
Just over in the glory land. I love that song. I wish somebody had told me this morning or another day that they had changed ways of going to Martin from here. We were riding along there and all of a sudden that thing went into four lane and said go to South Falls this way and here and then I said good grief it takes a PhD to learn how to get around over here. When I was here before you just go straight from Union City or straight to, to Martin. Not that way anymore. Not that way anymore. We had a good time this morning. Donna's not feeling well tonight and and that's why she's not here. She didn't feel like even going this morning. And I told her, well, you don't have to go. And she said, well, I, I need to go because they've invited us back. And, and so she stressed out when I left a little while ago. So I need to pray for, pray for her. But we had good services this morning. Had some tremendous preaching. <laughs> did you? We well, sure did. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, you and Jerry, you want to say, I'll be back Sunday. <laughs> I'm glad you had a good time this morning. Uh, uh, the brother Don called him last night just to make sure that, uh, that he's going to be here. And uh, he said, yes, I'm, I'm coming. And I told him, I said, you got to watch that pound labor. He said, you don't tell me that. He said, I already know what you're doing. <laughs> but... Uh, a lot of the folks that were there 31 years ago when I was pastoring, you know, I'll tell you this. They've got every pastor's picture that's available from back into the 1800s on the walls. And I, I, I walked through that, they call it the, uh, what did they say that was? I can't remember now. Anyway. Walk by there, and I saw my picture there. No, I had hair. <laughs> <laughs> had hair then. But uh, I'm glad to get back here. It was a good time there this morning, but I'm glad to get back here and uh, to be with you. If you have your Bibles with you this evening, I want to turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 6. By the way, we're glad to have the Flutes back again tonight. They were here this morning and uh, didn't know I was going to be gone, but they came back tonight and I'm glad to have them back with us tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'm going to use verse 6. And I'm going to speak about the encouragement for the days ahead. Encouragement for the days ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 6. Verse 6 says, Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The promise of this verse brings great encouragement to us as we face the days ahead. Those days may be dark days. They may be difficult days. They may be disappointing days. We may have to face upheavals in life in our nation. We really don't know what we're facing in our nation. But let me say this. We as God's children can turn this nation around if we'll follow him. And we need encouragement. We need encouragement for the days that we face. We may have to face upheavals in our personal lives, trials and testings. 
Is there anything with which we may encourage ourselves as we look into the future? As we face the possibilities of sickness, sorrow, bereavement, and loss? Yes, there he is. These comforting and assuring words promises blessings to us all the way through life. And these blessings are not in ourselves, but these blessings are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So tonight, I want to consider some of the things and remind ourselves of what God can do and what God promises to do. He promises this to all of us who love Him and belong to Him. The first thing I want to look at is we look ahead. We have the insurance of the Lord's unfailing love. This is wonderful. As we, as God's children, should constantly remind ourselves how God loves us. He has always loved us. He will always, he has always, and will, he will always love us. Listen to his word to us in Jeremiah 31 3. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Listen to John 13, verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart of this, out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. How long did he love the disciples? All the way to the end. He loved them to the uttermost, what it literally means. The father loved, you know what? The father loved the prodigal while he was out in the far country. Not just when he came home, but he loved him while he was out there. And that's the way God is with us. He loves us. He doesn't love our sin, but he loves us when we're out and lost. He loves us then. And when we come to Jesus, he still loves us also. Isn't that wonderful? We can't do anything that will cause God not to love us. He loves us all the way. So let us revel in this truth of John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. When did God stop loving any one of us? Well, I want to answer that question so clearly that if anyone doubts that God doesn't love them, that he or she will never doubt it again. The answer is never. Never. So if we look into the unknown future, we have the absolute assurance of of the Lord's unfailing love. Listen to this. Blessed shalt thou, in verse 6, blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. His love will never fail us. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. You may stop loving me, but God never will. Now, I know y'all are not going to stop loving me, but I just use that as an illustration. You know what? I won't let you stop loving me. How about that? <laughs> His love will never fail us. But there's a second encouragement I want to share with you tonight. We're looking ahead. We have the guarantee of the Lord's sufficient grace. 
Now we all have sense enough to know that we cannot possibly continue living life without experiencing trials and testings. I wish we could, but we can't. There are bound to be sorrows and losses and disappointments. Now can we feel encouraged as we face these possibilities in our lives? And again, yes we can. Because we not only have the assurance of the Lord's unfailing love, but we have the guarantee of the Lord's sufficient grace. And the Apostle Paul over in the 12th chapter of uh, is it 2 Corinthians, uh, where he talks about having born in the flesh. He, he will pray and ask God to let him to remove that uh, thorn. And God says, no. Now I'm paraphrasing. No, I won't move it, but I'll give you sufficient grace to endure it. That's an illustration, an indication of what the Lord is able to do and willing to do for us today. And every day, for as long as we live, what did Paul immediately say? When the Lord gave him the guarantee of the sufficiency of his grace, did he say, well, uh, in that case, Lord, I'll, I'll endure it. Uh, Lord, I'll put up with it. Oh, Lord, I won't complain. Was this the reaction that Paul had? No. No. Notice the words, listen to the words in verses 9 and 10. Paul's testimony, a marvelous testimony. He carefully chooses and uses most gladly. Glory in thy infirmities. Take pleasure in them for Christ's sake. Just like he's just like us. If we had a thorn in the flesh, we'd want it to be removed. But God says, no, I'm not going to do that. But I'll give you grace to endure it. And Paul says, okay. Paul's desire was that he might be weak in order that the power and strength of Christ might be more, more manifest. And what a testimony this is. And it could be our testimony also in, in 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. This is, God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God's grace is sufficient. So you see, when we look into the unknown world, the unknown future, the days ahead, we not only have the assurance of God's unfailing love, but we have also the guarantee of His sufficient grace. But there's a third thing. As we look ahead, we have the pledge of the Lord's abundant provision. <coughs> many of us today, and, and, and I can see why, many of us today are concerned to know how that we are going to manage financially as you know, for a long time, uh, 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 the economy has been going down and the cost of living has been going up. and Gasoline's been going up and, and uh, clothing's going up and groceries, groceries and stores growing up, growing up, going up. And for a long time, these have risen sharply. But this is a, a, a problem that all of us face from time to time. Money has lost its value. I know when I was in Belarus uh, a few years ago, the ruble was five to one to a dollar. You give those people over there, it works in the restaurants, you give them a dollar, boy, they just go loopy. That's five rubles to them. But the dollar has been going down and down in the last few years across the world. Yet, we dare to say that for the Lord's people, the needful supplies will be brought to us. Not everything we want, but the needful things, the necessary, the necessary things in our lives he will see that we get it if he is our shepherd and we're his sheep. 
Psalm 23 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Just think about that in the way in which the Lord supplied the needs of his servant Elijah. He took care of Elijah. And how true it is for each one of us. My God, Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He will supply our need. I remember when I left Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, uh, some of the family uh, thought that I was had lost my mind uh, and had those two little kids to quit that good job and, and go full time in the ministry. But I knew what God would do. You know, God didn't promise me but one thing. I'll supply your needs. And folks, I can tell you story upon story on it. On story. I don't have time to tell you tonight how God has provided for our needs down through the years. I've even had people to come to me to my back door and give me money when I really needed it. And some of the guys in the seminary with me, uh, they came out to the seminary with, uh, without a job or anything and God supplied their needs. I remember one of the guys that in a room with me, uh, uh, his home church, sent him a check from the church when he really needed it. I don't worry about wanting anything. God will supply everything for me and everything for you that is necessary uh, in our lives. Then, fourthly, and I get excited about this, when we look ahead... We have the expectation of the Lord's return. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. You can look at prophecy. You can look at the, the, the daily news, nightly news, and things are happening, folks. It can't be long before the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back. Now, that gets me excited to be able to see Jesus. We'll walk with him, talk with him, serve him. And buddy, I'll be able to sing in that choir. Don't let me get in choirs much anymore, but I'll sing in that heavenly choir, Pam, right by you. <laughs> and I'll have a truly glorious voice, even though I don't have it now. I get excited about Jesus coming. I see all the things happening in the world today and, and some of the uh, most ungodly things that are taking place in our world today. And, and I think to myself, Lord, like old John was, Lord, come quickly. When he's on the Isle of Patmos, Lord, come quickly. Not only does the Bible tell us that he's coming, but all the signs of the times declare that, that fact that his return is imminent. He's coming, folks. He's coming. He said he would. Our national and political signs refer only to his coming in power as the Son of God. Let me tell you something, folks. These people in Washington, D.C. cannot continuously shove their finger in the face of God and the way they're leading in this nation and expect God not to send his son back. I, I just like to say, I think it's, he's going to say one of these days, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Talk about reunions. Most, uh, Maxine, you had your reunion this, yesterday, I think, over here. Yeah. You talk about reunion. I know y'all rejoiced while you were over there yesterday, but you've not seen the reunion you're going to have when we get up there. Gather around that table, the, 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 the Lamb's Supper. Man, you haven't seen a feast of what we're going to have when, when that takes place. And when Jesus was speaking about the glorious truth of his return, the Apostle Paul was very careful to add, Wherefore comfort one another with these words in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18. Those are comforting words to me. Jesus is coming. 
Then fifthly, as we look ahead, we have the certainty of the Lord's loving welcome. If the Lord tarries, every one of us here in this place today, from the youngest to the oldest, we will one day pass away. In which case, we will have to pass through the veil of death. But if we are on earth when he comes back, think about this. If we're here on earth when he, when he comes back, we will never die. We'll just be translated. We'll just be walking in this body one moment and then receive the glorified body the next. But if we are called upon to experience death, is there any encouragement in that fall? I'm going to say yes, there he is. For death to the Christian is an enemy that has been overcome by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Jesus died on the cross. He took him down from the cross and put him in a bar or two. He was there three days. And the power of the Almighty God came down and, and raised him back up. And Jesus is still alive today. Jesus said, because I live, he shall live also. I like what the Apostle Paul said about, about this. He said he was, so, he was so confident about this that he actually said this. He said, to die is gain, Philippians 1, 21. To die is gain. And in, uh, in Psalm 116, 15, the psalmist said, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I'll tell you something. I miss the saints of God when they pass away and go on to heaven. You know what? In the back of my mind, it's a glorious day. They close their eyes in death here, but they open up their eyes in the presence of the Almighty God. Paul said, be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. Can you just think about this being here one day, walking around, and, and, the next, and Jesus coming, the next moment you'll be translated and given a glorified body? I used to tell them up there in St. Louis, you know, if you know anything about St. Louis, you know, 270 goes all the way around St. Louis. It's a horseshoe from the river all the way around back to the river again. And I used to preach on the rapture up there, and I'd say, folks, it's going to be a mess in the afternoon when everybody gets off from work. And all those four, five, six lanes are just bumper to bumper. And Christ comes back. And all those Christians are, are gathered up. You talking about a junkyard that's going to happen? They're going to leave. Think about that. Driving along and all of a sudden you're with Jesus. That's, that excites me. I, I, I might just get excited tonight. I don't know. I, uh, I, I love getting excited about Jesus. He'll welcome us when we, when we get there. The reason because our welcome will not be dependent upon our worthiness, but upon His worthiness, the merit and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The moment that the Lord says to us, come up here, we'll go be with Him. Far away from the cares of this world. Psalm 23, 6 says, to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But you know what the most wonderful thing about going to heaven will be? The welcome we shall receive from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Welcome home, my son, my daughter, my good and faithful servant. Well, let me close by saying this. What an encouragement this is. Verse 6, Deuteronomy 28 says, Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Surely the Lord promises us blessings all along the way of life. Blessings for, for every hour, every minute, every second, and for all the many moments of the days ahead until we see Him face to face. And then we shall receive blessings 
for all eternity. You know, Rachel, back in, I guess it was the 70s, was that when this Hallelujah Square uh, gospel song came out back in the 70s? I know it's got to be in the early 70s. Yeah. Uh, I thought often about that being around Hallelujah Square. You think about that. The Lord's there. Old Paul's there. All, all of your loved ones will be there around that Hallelujah Square. You talk about some Hallelujah good times. Those people won't be afraid to shout and praise God. Man, I, I can't wait to get there and, and, and just look at all the Baptists. Now, don't get me wrong now. I love Baptists. But I'm going to tell you, you'll be able to see the Baptists when we get into heaven. You can tell every Baptist because they're going to all be together over here in a corner shaking in their boots because those people are praising God. They have the nerve to shout. They have the nerve to praise God. So many of our churches today, if you got up in their church and shouted, they'd have heart attacks. I'm serious. They'd have heart attacks. But you know what? We need to get excited about the Lord. And I want people to know when they come to Fairview Baptist Church, we're here to get excited about the Lord. We're going to sing these good old gospel songs and we're going to preach and we're going to have a good time. We're going to love each other. We're going to love God. And uh, we're just going to have a great time worshiping uh, the Lord. It was good to be back at the church I pastored 31 years ago, but it's even better to be back here tonight. Let's pray. Father, Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings and the encouragement for the days that are ahead. We know, Lord, we will not face those days by ourselves. As your word tells us, you will never leave us. Just as the shepherd on the hillside was taking care of his sheep, Lord Jesus, you're the great shepherd and you take care of your sheep. You lead us and direct us and guide us. You love us. You give us tender, loving care. And Lord, we're so thankful for that. The strength that we have to face the days ahead. And Father God, I do pray for our leaders in our nation. Uh, so many of them don't, don't even look to you for the decisions that they make and they're making decisions to... Uh, in these past few days and just uh, continue to make them that's contrary to your word and, and uh, just walking away from your word. But Lord, help us as your children all across the world, all across the United States to stand up and say, God loved us enough to give us Jesus and we love him enough to stand up and be counted against those who are trying to uh, take uh, our God out of everything. Lord, thank you for the encouragement that we have seen in your word tonight. And Lord, as we leave this place, I pray, Lord, that we would go out into the world with uh, faith and trust in you and, and tell other people about Jesus and what he can do for them. In Jesus' name that I pray, amen.